Welcome to chapter 9. Our last chapter we talked about was chapter 6. That was chemical equations and stoichiometry percent yield. And you might think, well, why not 7, then 8, then 9? Well, it turns out it makes more sense if we do 9, which is solutions. And then we can do 8, which is gases. And then we're going to do 7, which is uh, the rates of reactions and uh, things like heat of reaction as well. So it just plays better because solutions help us uh, when we get to gases, but particularly help us when we get to chapter 7. So our textbook, um, I've told them before, I really think chapter 9 should go before chapter 7 and 8, but they don't listen to me. So here we go. So what do we mean by a solution? So a solution is uh, something that I'm going to abbreviate to S-O-L-N and is made up of two parts. It is made up of a part that we call the solute, and uh, it is made of a part that we call the solvent. And our definition of solute versus solvent is the solvent is what we've got the most of. So if we've got three or four or five things mixed together, whichever we've got the most of is called the solvent. And then the solute is what we've got the least um, of. And there may be more than one component here in the solute, but there's only ever one solvent. So some examples of solutions are um, things like um, seawater. And so seawater is a solution. And the thing we've got the most of is water. I guess that's why we call it seawater. So water is the solvent. And uh, what else is dissolved in there? Well, we've got things like salt. And there's lots of different types of ionic compounds here that we all call salt. But salt uh, would be the solute. We can have other solutions as well. So uh, an example of another solution uh, might be something like vodka. And vodka is a solution um, that, again, primarily consists of water, uh, about 60%. And the rest of it is alcohol. And the alcohol is about 40%. In fact, uh, Dmitry Mendeleev, the guy who discovered the periodic table, was commissioned by the Russian government to figure the best ratio of alcohol to water. And here's a very nice picture of uh, Mendeleev right here with his uh, periodic table. And uh, it looks a little weird to our eyes, but Mendeleev was the guy who figured out that optimal vodka, water, alcohol ratio. And here's three more solutions that are uh, sort of surprising. Air is actually a solution. And if we ask ourselves, well, what is the solvent in each of these? That is the thing that we've got the most of. And so in air, it turns out that nitrogen. So nitrogen is N2. That's the gas. That is the solvent and the solute is what we've got a smaller component of and so in nitrogen uh, in air that's about 78 uh, percent we've got oxygen which is about 21 percent so this would be a solute and surprisingly enough about one percent of the air is actually argon that noble inert gas so right now we are breathing in for every one liter we breathe in we're breathing in 10 milliliters of this uh, argon this uh, noble gas wow that's really cool if we look at club soda, so if you're not sure what club soda is, here's a pic. Club soda is also a s solution, and uh, water is the solvent, and the solute here is actually carbon dioxide. So that's what gives it that tasty fizz that you can mix your, you know, whatever you prefer to mix with it is, I suppose. And our last example of a solution is something like brass, which is about two-thirds copper, one-third zinc. So that means that copper is in the largest component, so that's the solvent. And the solute would be the smaller component, that is zinc. And there may be a few other elements in there too, like uh, lead and uh, tin and iron, let's say. So uh, those could be other components right there. So there's some lead and there's some tin and uh, there's some iron. So we've got uh, four different solutes there, but one solvent. So brass is very shiny, right? It looks uh, very similar to gold, but it's definitely not gold. So when most of us think of solutions, right, we think of maybe a solid sprinkled in some uh, liquid like uh, sugar in water or salt in water, but it doesn't always have to be that case. Okay, so this is an example of air, which is a gas, um, sorry, a gas dissolved in a gas, and club soda is an example of a gas dissolved in a liquid, and brass is an example of a whole bunch of solids dissolved in a solid. Sometimes we call this one an alloy, by the way. So these are all solutions. They're homogeneous mixtures. So there is uh, multiple components, but they're all uh, dissolved uh, neatly so that when you look at it, there's not like a lumpy place where there's a little more zinc and or a little more lead. They're perfectly distributed throughout the entire solution. So when we're working with solutions, there are four or five terms that are convenient to know. So dilute, I think most people are familiar with. But the technical, uh, I guess, definition is that it's got a low ratio of solute to solvent 
or multiple solutes to a solvent. So there's just not a lot of solute, a lot of solvent. Concentrated means the exact opposite, if you like. It's got a high ratio of solute to solvent. There's also uh, three other terms, saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated. And saturated means that there is the maximum amount of solute that can dissolve. So max amount of solute. Uh, I didn't win any awards for handwriting, I'm afraid. That can dissolve in a given amount of solvent. So given amount of solvent. And uh, unsaturated just means that there is basically less than the maximum amount. So you could dissolve more if you like. And supersaturated seems like it shouldn't exist. Supersaturated means there is actually more than the maximum amount that can dissolve. So how is it possible to have more that can possibly dissolve? Well, it's actually unstable. So it turns out that you can trick it and you can get it to dissolve for, you know, seconds or minutes or hours, but you're never going to be able to keep it in solution permanently. So think of something like honey. So honey is sort of sugar and bee spit. And if you leave your honey kind of sit around for a while, you notice that it gets crystalline. It gets really hard. And that's because all that extra sugar that shouldn't dissolve is actually crashed out of solution because that solution was super saturated. Here's an example, not of uh, honey, but of some sodium acetate. And so the, the sodium acetate was dissolved in hot water. And as it cooled down, all that sodium acetate stayed in the hot water. And when it cooled down, the water became nice and cool. And then eventually something hit the surface, probably right here. And it triggered this reaction where all that extra sodium acetate crashed out of solution. And this would grow and fill up the whole beaker over time. One more piece of terminology is an aqueous solution. And so an aqueous solution is one we've used in the lab a lot. And what does aqueous mean? It means that water is the solvent. And these are the most common solutions we use in the introductory lab. And of course, as a, as a person, we are mainly water. And so all our solutions in our body are hopefully aqueous.